Alright, <clears throat> am I comfortable? Something in my pocket. Comfortable? Yeah, I think so. Alright, welcome back to my channel guys. Um, I was going to do another foraging video, sort of like an updated one with more information in it because I had quite a lot of comments on um, both YouTube and TikTok. TikTok, my comments are really bad actually. There's so much um, misinformation, well not misinformation, just people that don't have a clue what they're talking about. Um, <coughs> oh, sorry. I've got a rough chest. I um, breathed in cement dust at work about a week ago and I started coughing up blood. But um, <laughs> we're gonna, we're just gonna brush over that because that was kind of scary. But I'm all right. I'm okay now. I went to the A and E. I'm absolutely fine. Um, chest is just still a little bit raw. But yeah, so the lookalikes. A lot of people are asking if the lookalikes are dangerous. Um, most of them aren't. Most of them are just going to give you the shits. At most, um, <laughs> bad stomach. You might end up being sick. Um, so not ideal. Don't eat the lookalikes. You know, mate. Do do learn the differences. Don't just fucking grab everything and you know hope that in in your in your mix of um, like Protostropharia and Penalius that there's enough Liberty caps that are still going to get you sort of you know where you want to be. Um, definitely definitely learn the differences and don't eat the lookalikes. They're not edible mushrooms. As I say, some of them will give you sort of. Well, there's what do the uh, mycologists say? Gast gastrino gast gastrino intestinal upset the shits um basically another one is flicking uh flicking the cap before you pick it realistically i don't see how that does anything um you know there's there's specialized cells in the gills of the mushroom that that produce the spores and release them when they're when they're ready you know mature enough to be released um flicking them flicking them is not gonna it's not gonna do that um but something you can, something I think that is is actually quite good practice is to collect your mushrooms in a in a mesh bag. So this is just one of those plastic fruit like fresh produce bags that you get from uh, Asda, Asda Sainsbury's, Lidl's, Tesco's, the lot. They all do them. Um, but obviously this is a this is a fine mesh bag. So the idea is obviously it holds all your mushrooms, but the mushrooms don't die the second that you pick them out of the ground. Um, they're gonna they're gonna still be releasing and producing spores for a good few hours, if not days after they've been picked. I think as long as they've pretty much got a decent amount of water, um, they'll they'll still be going for quite a while. So as you're going around gathering all your mushrooms up, this bag is gonna allow the spores to to be dropping all over the field. As you know, you spend the next few hours gathering more mushrooms. So I think that if you haven't got one of these. Definitely grab one because I, I do think this is probably probably best practice when when picking. Another common um, sort of rumor, old wives' tale, whatever you want to call it, is that somehow picking the picking the stipe out of the ground in its entirety somehow damages the the mycelial network under the ground. What I hear actually a lot of people's claim is that it damages the roots. Uh, mushrooms don't have roots. Mushrooms are mushrooms are made up of. Um, bundles and bundles of hyphae which are like just very very thin like a stringy substance um, and it bundles and knots together to create mycelium and then the mycelium bundles and knots together to create the fruiting body to create the mushroom um, it's 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 turtles all the way down there's no root system there to be damaged um, and in fact there was a study actually i believe it came out last year 2023 maybe I've, I'll, I'll put it in the comments if i can remember because it's an interesting one i can't remember if it was done on mycorrhizal species so species that um sort of live symbiotically with plants and trees and things or if it was done on um saprophic saprobic i've forgotten the exact pronunciation i'm i most i do a lot of reading not not talking um, with other people about this stuff but basically mushrooms that that eat dead stuff like psilocybe semilensiata i can't remember which one the study was on either way but um there was two two sort of areas one of them was um they, they were the mushrooms were picked or pulled in their entirety the other one the mushrooms were cut um, to leave, you know, the like to, to not damage the mycelial network that produced the fruit. Um, and after I think it was 30 years they did this for it, and the reason the data just come out now, um, and it suggests that there's, there's absolutely no difference, absolutely no difference at all. And if anything, I reckon it's probably better for the mushroom to pull it out in its entirety because obviously, if you if you were to pinch it at the stipe, you're creating an open wound there for viruses and bacteria or whatever to to get into the mushroom and, and that could potentially uh, affect, infect, affect the mycelial network. So if anything, my intuition as a, as a horticulturalist and an amateur sort of botanist mycologist um, is that pulling it out in its entirety is probably better for the overall health of the mushroom. And I wouldn't be surprised if it actually stimulates it to grow more. 
as well again just intuition i've not sort of read anything that, that backs that up but you know logic logically thinking sort of critical thinking would suggest that's the case um but yeah i'm pretty pretty sure that was that was all i really wanted to bring up yeah picking it its entirety flicking the cap yeah mesh bags look thanks for uh thanks everyone that subscribed i've had like a thousand subscribers in the last month obviously most of you guys are here because you're interested in picking um psilocybe species of mushrooms I'm, i definitely need to bring out a video on wavy caps or psilocybe cyanescence they are in the uk uh quite widespread actually throughout europe um they were first documented in what is it 1952 something like that in kew gardens um and that was like the first real sort of time they were documented in the uk but with with how widespread they are they've they've been here for a bit longer than that i think um who was it alan rockefeller probably not um that's just a famous name in mycology although he might have had something to do with it but somebody somebody sequenced um a load of psilocybe cyanescence not long ago and they they found that it was like really genetically similar to um, other australian species of psilocybe other like sort of you know mushrooms that are, that are you know related to like a family level or whatever um so yeah i mean it, it it seems like they actually come from Australia. We used to think it come from the Pacific Northwest in America, but we think it come from Australia now. So likely when, you know, us Britons um, destroyed the world a few hundred years ago when we conquered Australia um, and we brought all the plants back to England, we probably brought psilocybe cyanescence back with us then. So it's probably had a few hundred years um, to be passed around through horticultural circles. You know, somebody grows, grows a species of tree or they've got a plant they're taking a cut and there's, there's you know, spores get spores get moved around and taken between places. And I mean, if you go up to Kew Gardens today, you'll find psilocybe cyanescence in the mulch beds, um, particularly underneath the chestnut trees. But I didn't tell you that. <laughs> um, I certainly did not tell you that. But yeah, annoyingly, you might be able to hear the rain now. It's actually getting heavier. I was really, really still hoping to redo that that first video, um, that foraging video. But yeah, the weather's heavy. I just wanted to do a sort of i wanted to address the comments from that video um you guys seem to like it when i talk about magic mushrooms or psilocybe mushrooms so yeah but we just chill out for a little bit under the tree it's quite a nice view i mean if you like the, if you like the uh bad weather, look, let me let me show you let me show you the view this is what we're dealing with it is uh it's gorgeous actually. I love, I love living in a temperate country. I wouldn't have it any other way. Actually I would, I would love to live in Texas dude. But I'm glad, I'm glad I was raised and born. Born and raised in a, in a temperate region. The rain's nice, it's just turning into autumn as well. So all of the, uh, all the trees are starting to turn orange, which is pretty sweet. But yeah, just rambling, rambling and rambling at this point. I've said everything I wanted to say, but I do uh, quite like talking to you guys hopefully i get some more comments generally enjoy interacting with the community hopefully i feel like we're starting to build a little community here um, i'm starting to have people that are commenting on you know multiple of my videos and um, that seem to enjoy the sort of content that i put out i know this is slightly a bit more a bit more chilled and slower not that my content's like fucking exciting or racing or anything but it's exciting to me <laughs> i get excited over plants and mushrooms and things and i hope you guys do as well that's probably going to be it for that one Goodbye.